Hello, I'm Luis. Marshall Motley. Gustavo Rodriguez. Chris Rue. We're here to go ahead and explain to you our moment of inertia for a built up section. And what we have here is from our homework four, our number one uh, problem. We had our area of a rectangle figured out, and our area of a triangle with a void. And then we've gone ahead, we sat down and figured our origin to be over the bottom left hand side of our problem. And then we went ahead and made all of our measurements before we started to go ahead and find out all of our centroids. And I'll pass it over to Louise to explain that. So the next part is going to be breaking down our uh, shapes into three different components. And the first thing you want to do is uh, find out your area. You can easily do that by multiplying 4 times 6, give you 24. And then x is going to be the distance from its component to the center. So you, you can divide 4 by 2 and it gives you 2 inches. Um, the next one's going to be uh, um, a times a, I mean x times a. And uh, that can be accomplished by multiplying your area times your x, which would be 48 inches. And then you do the same thing on your y. You got three inches away from the top, so you divide by six by two, and you do the same thing. Multiply your uh, y times your area, gives you 72. And then you total all of them up, and you divide you solve for x bar and y bar. And you do that by dividing x a over a, and that will give you 2.84. And then you do the same thing on y, it'll give you 2.84. <coughs> Seven, and then it comes to the next shape and you just plug them in. And that gives us our total centroid after we went up for our x distance up to show us where it will come and then our y distance based on these two values here. And then Gus will be able to explain to us how exactly we took this over into our other chart. So this is our other chart. We have it broken down in three compon components like you said. So here we have our area of each component and that's easy based on height as we've explained. Uh, the second column you have ix. So that's the base times the height cubed over 12, and you get these measurements. Then you find dy, and how you find that is you take your y bar minus your yi. Uh, how we explained it up there is this is from the component centroid to the overall centroid, and we worked it out. You go over here to the bottom corner where we ex explained. From there, you can find your ady squared, and you do the same thing for the, the component in the y direction. Um, after that, you sum these totals up, and Chris will talk to you about finding the moment of inertia and the radius of gyration. <laughs> Find the moment of inertia, you sum up your I of X and ADY squared. Uh, it's the same for IY, it's IY and ADX squared. Uh, then you go to the moment of gyration and do square root of IX over the area, you get 2.07. And for our moment of gyration for Y is IY over A, you get 3.25. So, in conclusion, all of us have come together and tried to make a problem out of this. In our homework problem, we only had to find the x-axis and y-axis of the solution, and we have a missing component here. So based on all of this information, this is where we had actually found our moment of inertia to be, as well as our radius of gyration. So you do the math.